Welcome to ITTV for Form 2 Science, where we're looking at the world through our senses. Today's lesson, the sense of touch. When we talk about the sense of touch, what we really sort of talk about is if something is hot or cold. We are all very familiar with picking up a glass of cold water, having some ice in our hand. Or the opposite is touching something very hot and pulling our hand away very quickly. I think we've all accidentally touched something that was very sharp and painful to us. We've all had a sensation of pressure where somebody was pressing or pulling us. Also, we know or seem to be able to feel when something is smooth or if something is rough. All of this come under the umbrella of the sense of touch. We can, when we touch something, know if it's soft, hard or sharp. In the case of the slide, the teddy bear is soft, the nails are sharp, and the hammer is hard. We can also do other ones, such as cold, which is the ice block, or hot, which is the steam coming out from the kettle. We are able to sense all these different types of stimulus because of a very, very important sense organ, which is called our skin. Our skin is two millimeters thick and it covers our entire body. In fact, our skin is actually the largest organ in our body. It is even a system by itself called the interglutamary system. So the skin is so, so important for us. Our skin is the outer covering of our body. Like I said, it is the biggest organ in our body. It doesn't only allow us to sense hot, cold, pressure or pain. It has many, many other functions for us. The main parts of our skin are the epidermis, dermis, fat cells, pores, sweat glands, oil glands and nerve fibers. Now, for the purpose of today's lesson, I'm not really going to have a look at too much detail in terms of the hairs, the sweat gland or the oil gland. I will just quickly tell you that the hairs are mainly there to help us maintain our body temperature. The sweat glands are also there to help us maintain our body temperature and to help get rid of some excess water from our body. And our oil glands are there to help waterproof our skin to prevent us from losing too much water. All of these we'll discuss in other chapters later on in our science. For today, we really want to look at the sense of touch. That is to look at how our skin detects the stimuluses that it is designed to detect. The skin has two main layers, an upper layer and a bottom layer. The dermis, which is below, and the epidermis, which is above. So we have two layers, the epidermis on top and the dermis below. Each layer has its own function. Let's start by having a look at some of the functions of the upper layer, which is the epidermis. The epidermis is the upper layer. It is made up of dead cells. It is waterproof. It prevents the entry of bacteria into the body. So it's very, very important for us, especially the two last parts. The waterproof, which helps us prevent or reduce water loss from our body. And the last one, prevent entry of bacteria into our body, 
This is our first line of defense for us, where we stop the bacteria entering, thereby preventing the possibility of us getting an infection. Now let's look at the lower layer, which is the dermis. The dermis is the middle layer. It consists of living cells, blood capillaries, nerves, and sweat glands. It also has receptors and nerve endings. The most important part here is the last bit. It's inside this dermis layer that we find most of our receptors. Some of the receptors are actually in the epidermis layer, but most of them sit in this dermis layer because the nerves need to get food, nutrients, oxygen in order to survive and live. Because remember, nerves are cells. And all cells need to do respiration, to produce energy, they all produce waste and in order for them to survive they need to have blood and oxygen and nutrients provided to them. The skin is sensitive to pressure, pain, heat, cold and touch. Now you need to know where each of these receptors are in the skin. So I'm going to go up to the board here and just give you a very quick sketch of the skin and where the main receptors are. Now like we said, the skin basically has two main layers. So what we'll do here is, we'll just draw these two layers in. This is the top layer, which is your epidermis. And this is the middle layer here, which is our dermis. Now, just before I show you the nerve endings, please also understand underneath these two layers, over in this area down here, we have our fat cells. Okay, so inside here, oops, Daisy, we have our fat cells which basically provide us with insulation. Their main function is to reduce heat loss from the body. So let's have a look at the receptors. Firstly, we have a receptor that goes all the way up to here. This receptor is for pain. It's very close to the outside of the skin because we want to detect pain as fast as possible. It is the most important and possibly the most dangerous to us. Next, we have our heat and cold receptors. These two receptors sit more or less in the middle of our dermis. So you can have the cold receptor here and you can have the heat receptor over here. So these two detect heat and cold. They're just slightly below the epidermis layer so that any change in the environment can be detected. But they've got to be quite substantial changes so that the heat needs to travel quite a bit of a distance to get to here as with the cold. The next receptor we want to look at is our touch receptors. Normally our touch receptors are roughly in this area here, okay? And they allow us to sense things when we touch them. We don't want them to be right on the outside. If these were too high up, basically even when the air blew across us, we would basically feel it because they'd be too close to the outer layer of the skin. So basically in our design, we've got them slightly down so that we really have to touch something in order for us to feel it. The last of our receptors is our pressure receptor. The pressure receptor sits right at the bottom down here. This is for pressure. Now you really have to have a lot of pressure applied to you. If you just put a finger up here, 
You don't really feel any pressure. You don't want to. You need to actually press quite hard before you can feel any pressure. Now the whole idea is, if you're going to detect a stimulus, you don't want it to be something that's just touching you. You want it to be pressing into you, and then your body will realize, ooh, there's some pressure being applied to that part. Okay? So because of this, the pressure receptor is quite low down and far away from the upper layer of the skin. So please understand that the position of the receptors is directly related to how important it is. The most important one, pain. We want to know about pain immediately because there is a very good chance that it could be dangerous or harmful to us. So the pain receptors are right at the top. Like I said, the next three important ones, heat, cold and touch, they sit somewhere in the middle of the dermis layer. And the pressure receptor, not that important, important nonetheless, but not that important like the other ones, that sits even lower down in the dermis layer. So let's just recap all of these receptors and their main positions. The pain receptor is in the epidermis, the touch, heat and cold receptors are in the dermis and the pressure receptors are in the fat layer all the way down at the bottom over here, okay? So remember about these three layers and where we have all our main receptors. When a stimulus is detected, the receptor sends signals to the brain or the spinal cord. Let's quickly jump back to the board now and just quickly go through one of them. Let's see what happens when we get some pain happening. Let's say that we accidentally step on a nail or something and the nail comes right through and hits the pain receptor. Basically what will happen now is the pain receptor will detect the stimulus. Remember, once the stimulus is detected by the pain receptor, the message will be sent to the brain through the sensory neuron over here. So it will fire off a message. This message then will travel through the body until it reaches the brain. Then the brain will decide what to do. Normally, if you have got some sort of pain, the brain is going to say, pull your hand away or scream ow or jump up and down or something to that effect. So remember, the stimulus hits the receptor, the receptor sends a message through the sensory neuron all the way to the brain. Now, let's try a few questions just to recap what we've done so far already. Name two layers of the skin. Remember what we went through just now? We have a layer at the top and we have a layer at the bottom. What are the names of those two layers? Let's have a look at the answer. The epidermis and the dermis. The epidermis and the dermis. Let's try another quick question. The skin detects what type of stimulus. Now remember the skin's got a whole bunch of receptors there. You need to know all of them. Remember them by their position and what is important. Okay? Now try to think about it. Try and get at least four of them correct. Let's have a look at the answer. Heat, cold, pain and pressure. If you have written heat, cold, pain, and touch, that would be fine. Okay, so don't forget, the fifth one would be touch. So, now let's just quickly uh, recap on what we've done so far. Remember, the skin has five receptors to detect the different types of stimulus because there's a lot of information coming in. So, we've got five different receptors. The receptors' positions are Pain receptors are at the top. Heat and cold receptors, roughly in the middle, in the dermis layer. 
pressure receptors below just at the top of the fat cell layer. So this is the main part of our skin, the receptors that we have and the types of stimulus that they detect. Now what we want to do is we want to move one step further and think about how good our skin is at detecting stimulus. So what we're really looking at is the sensitivity of the skin. Sensitivity is how accurate our skin is at detecting different types of stimulus. So let's take a look at the sensitivity of the skin. Now when we talk about the sensitivity of our skin, we need to think about what we are really looking at here. Sensitivity of the skin depends on how thick the skin is and how many receptors there are in a part of the skin. So there are two main factors here, thickness and how many receptors. Now let's do a very simple experiment to have a look at the receptor part. Some areas have less receptors, some areas have more receptors. Now what I have here is a simple pin. This pin has got two little sharp bits, okay? Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to push it together so that they're quite close to one another, like this. Now, what we're going to try and do is see whether or not, with my eyes closed, although I know what I'm doing, whether or not my skin can detect that there are two points or whether my skin thinks there are one point. If my skin thinks that there is only one point there, that means my skin is not very sensitive. And that means that there's not many receptors in that area. If my skin can detect that there are two points, it means that it's more sensitive, more receptors are present. Now when I take this and I poke it on the back of my hand, like so, it feels as though there's just one point there. It doesn't feel like there's two. This is because the back of our hand has less receptors. Now if I repeat the experiment using my fingers and I put this on my finger, I can clearly feel two points. It is so obvious to me. That means my fingers are much more sensitive. They have more receptors inside them and I can detect both the stimulus. So remember, different parts of our skin have different numbers of receptors. The more receptors you have, the more sensitive your skin becomes. The more receptors we have, the more sensitive the skin is. The neck, fingers and face have many receptors. It is very sensitive. And we need these areas to be sensitive because they are very, very important for us. The face sees for us. Our brain is inside there. We need it to be able to detect as many stimulus as possible. The neck here contains our spinal cord in the back. We don't want to damage the spinal cord, so the neck is very sensitive to any touch. We use our fingers all the time to feel smooth, rough surfaces. They need to be very, very sensitive in order to pick up these tiny, tiny differences in detail. The back of the hand, the arms and the buttocks have less receptors. It is less sensitive. Now, if you think about it, if you use a bit of common sense here, you'll understand why. When we walk around, it is just so easy to accidentally knock your hand. Now, if you had a lot of receptors in the back of your hand, it would really, really hurt. So because there are less receptors here, the pain we feel is lesser. And this is very important because, like I said, we knock our hands all the time. The same applies to our arms and also to our buttocks. We sit down all the time. 
Imagine that is every time you sat down, all you felt was pain. The idea is we don't want to feel pain when we sit down. We just want to have a sense of where the chair is in terms of touch. So this is why these areas have less receptors. The thicker the skin, the less sensitive the skin. Once again, we can do a very simple demonstration using the pin again to show that the thicker the skin, the less sensitive it is. And I'm just going to use my palm for this. Now, I'm going to put my palm down here. Now, if you just have a common look at your palm, you will notice that the top part of your palm is much thicker and the lower part of your palm, nearer to your fingers, is much thinner in terms of how thick the skin is. Now, if I was to take this and press it over here, like so, well, to me, once again, this feels just like one stimulus, not two. This means that this area is less sensitive. Now, if I was to repeat the experiment just below my fingers, well, I can tell you that I can actually feel two stimulus. It's not as clear as when I used my finger, but it's still quite clear that there's two bits poking into my hand. Now, what this is showing me is that thinner skin is more sensitive because the stimulus is much closer to the nerve endings. With thicker skin, the stimulus is further away from the nerve endings. Therefore, we don't detect the stimulus so well. Areas such as the palm of the hand and the sole of the foot have thick epidermis layer. It is less sensitive to touch. Why? Because we use these areas all the time and we don't want ourselves to feel pain in these areas. Imagine writing with your pencil using your palm and your hand just is in pain. You don't want that to happen. So what you do is you make a thicker layer of skin so it is harder for the stimulus to reach the pain receptors. Therefore, you can write without any pain. Using the concept of skin sensitivity, injections are given in the arm or buttocks. Why do you think this is? Why does the injection come in the arm or in the buttock area? Have you thought about it? Well, I hope your answer is similar to mine, which is because it is less sensitive. It is less sensitive because the skin is thicker and also because there are less receptors in the area. Bottom line is, it means there is less pain for you to endure. Using the concept of skin sensitivity, blind people use their fingers to read braille. Why do you think this is? Why their fingers? Why not the palm of their hand or the back of their hand? Well, the answer is, the fingers have more receptors and therefore is more sensitive to touch, okay? They want to be able to feel all the little indentations in the braille so that they can read easily and accurately. Now that we've had a look at the factors that affect the sensitivity of skin, which is the number of receptors and how thick the skin is, let's try a few questions to test our knowledge. Which is more sensitive, fingertips or the arm? Remember the Braille experiment that we just did? Let's have a look at the answer. The fingertips, they have more receptors. One last quick question. What are the factors that affect sensitivity of the skin? Remember the two main factors, we've just discussed them. Let's have a look at the answer. The number of receptors and the thickness of the skin. So remember, our skin is a major sense organ. It's there to detect pain, heat, cold and pressure. How well the skin works depends on its sensitivity, the thickness of the skin and how many receptors we have. Try to remember these four or five main points, the types of receptors, and the factors that affect sensitivity. 
Well, that's all for today's lesson. Thank you for watching ITTV.